is a good morning because it's, it always didn't feel this way. I lived many years since 1992 in darkness. It was a, all of a sudden thing. First of all, I need to say that I'm a runaway, living in the streets of New York, <laughs> in the trains, living in rooftops, open cars, not for the reason of stealing the radio or anything like that, but because I was looking for a place to stay. So I come from a very dysfunctional family, but yet very loving family. And um, my mom and my dad got a divorce, and that was not the reason of why I am the product of a divorce. And I was looking for protection and acceptance and tender love and care. But I went to the wrong places, being very promiscuous and, and doing the unthinkable. I found myself um, at the age of 7, uh, 15 with a uh, young man, sorry, I get emotional, only a year older than me. And I became pregnant with this young man. And I had a beautiful girl. So I, I didn't abort this girl. And I'm so glad because she's, she's my light. Jesus, stand up. <laughs> she's my girl. She's my girl right now. But soon after that, I was being um, physically abused. I was a punching ball. And I don't really like to talk about that. And I'm going to skip that. But I. That was the reason why I broke up the relationship with her, with her father, because I was physically abused. And I needed help, because I was about to die in that relationship. But being a junkie, looking for love in the wrong places, I ended up with a second relationship. And I thought, well, you know, he was young, so I'm gonna look for an older and wiser man. So I was 19, and this man was 35. And this man treated me well. But um, because he was wiser, uh, I became pregnant with this man, and I followed his steps to knowing, I mean, in other words, allowing him to make a decision for me that it was to take me to an abortion clinic. I became pregnant, and I didn't, I was never abortion-minded, but he was abortion-minded. And he took me to this clinic, he paid, his, he paid away and everything, and I trusted him. To make a long story short, when I got to the clinic, I knew that that was the wrong choice. And I stood up and I said, no, I can't do this. Well, he said, we can't have this. I said, well, I can't do this. And because he was supporting me, again, junkie of love, needed to submit to what this man was saying to me. And I found myself on that table, counting 10, 3, 2, 0. I was there. When I got up, I had a sense of false relief, I could just say it that way, and I had the abortion. Little did I know that a couple of months later, I was going to find myself in the same situation, and this time it was my doctor who said, you know, you've been taking medication, and you need to have an abortion. Well, I did it once. I was numb. I could do it again. But the second time, it was like, I went the first time one step, but the second time, I went boom, boom, boom. And I was in darkness completely. I had, I had severe panic attacks, depression, couldn't see the light of day, and I'm a bubbly person, you know, and I was just depressed, completely in depression. It wasn't until 1994, I found myself in the kitchen and asking God, if you don't come and do something, if you're really God, change my life. And that's when he stepped in and the process began. Well, it wasn't late until later, like six years later in my Christianity, that I was listening to WMCU here in Florida and focus on the family would come on. And when Dr. Dobson would talk about abortion, I couldn't find a dial fast enough to change it. And I didn't know why. But it was because I needed to bring that out. And again, every single day, focus on the family, abortion, for the couple of weeks. And I said, I have a problem. And that's when I decided to just look for help. And my journey didn't come with somebody that came alongside of me. I asked the help of the Holy Spirit. And he started to show me that I needed, I, of course I knew that he would have forgiven me, but I needed to forgive myself. 
And that's when that leads to ask forgiveness to the babies. And that's when the re that's when really healing began. Because you know what? I needed to write a letter saying to those babies that mom made a big mistake, but that she loves them very much. And that they're not part of my past, but they're part of my future. And the mommy's doing something different now. She's helping other women to make the right decision because she has somebody to stand up alongside her to make that decision. And it makes my feelings in that letter is that, you know, I'm coming back with an army. Amen. You know, you were a, 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 a sacrifice. But you know what? Mommy's going to turn this back around with the help of the Holy Spirit. So thank you for allowing me to share this because you know what? The devil is a liar. And I never saw a baby casket. My heart just jumped when I saw the baby casket. Well, you see, I was just like, not only my babies were in the casket at one time, I was, my, my emotions, my, my life was in that casket with them. And then God said, you are alive and you're well, and I need you. So if you're hurting today, and you think that there's no hope, let me tell you, I got my joy back. Amen. Amen.